Hi everybody! One of the highlights of our Norway and Iceland cruise last summer was an excursion call from fjords to trolls from Olesen, Norway. We booked this tour with Viator, which is quite a bit cheaper than booking the same exact Land of the Trolls tour from the cruise line. The link to this particular Viator excursion is in the description below. There is a variation of this tour that includes a Norwegian buffet lunch. And we'll show you what the food from there was like, which we enjoyed a lot by the way. So we definitely recommend that you include lunch with this tour, which was only about $20 extra per person. So coming up, check out some of the highlights and breathtaking views of this tour. And then let us know what you think with a comment. We had an excellent tour guide named Bus, and you'll hear some of the useful and interesting information he provided. For us, this adventure started at around 8.50 a.m. But if your cruise ship arrives later than that, the tour will start after guests are cleared to get off the ship. Let's kick things off by showing you where to board the bus. My name is uh, Bus. I will introduce myself a bit uh, further later on. Because first I have to ask you to fasten your seat belts. Uh, I don't expect that it will be a super wild ride, but it's just uh, obligatory by uh, Norwegian law. And the question I just heard was, will we be back in time? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, that's one of the things that our company guarantees in the high standard. So uh, yes, we'll... I think the first stop is an uh, like hop on, hop off photo stop. It means uh, five minutes. It is really like uh, you can go out of the bus shoot a couple of nice pictures and then we hop back on that's a hop on hop off stop and this the first stop will uh, be the store fjord that is the fjord that we just saw in Alessund already all the way that we're driving now and it goes even further in total the length tunnels in Norway is that they don't plaster everything up so here you can still see the, the mountain uh, yeah how it really is uh, fantastic we have all the space for ourselves yeah Might have been, I'm not sure church there's also an uh, old farmhouse it's uh it doesn't snow and uh, the other time was an avalanche from rocks and then on the right side of the rose church you see a very old farm with the uh, with a grass roof I hear the waterfall So now we are driving back through autumn and uh, I think it's a nice moment to talk a bit about uh, wildlife. Uh, in this area we do have bears and in this area they can also be hunted. But it's not the case everywhere. For example in Alusun. And one of the reasons that you can shoot bears in this area is that they don't have natural predators anymore. Uh, also the wolverine and the lynx. Yeah, and the wolverine uh, yeah, it's quite a, quite a strong animal. It's quite muscular, has short legs, can be about one meter tall, uh, three foot. And if you measure the height from the feet till the top of the back, then we're talking about 45 centimeters or one and a half foot. Um, yeah, and this is really the environment for the, for the wolverine. It's like wet, uh, needle type of forest, it's uh, rocky steep hills that's really the environment he thrives in now be one with nature 
another activity that uh, Norwegians like a lot is uh, hiking. Uh, so this is a hop on hop off photo stop. Um, yeah, this is just enough space for us. Uh, five minutes, so in 10, 25, we are going back on. That season so, uh, enjoys that uh, that source of, uh, of food. I think we can. But then there's still the whole, how do you say it? Winter to survive without fruits. And on the right side we see now some really nice water. Uh, quite high, I must say. Uh, quite fierce as well. Which is good news because uh, on the next stop, uh, when you will walk through the forest uh, over some waterfalls, that's uh, yeah, I find it very promising. Probably the waterfalls will be very intense, powerful, uh, and beautiful. And on the left and right side, we see strawberries, plants. Not the strawberries itself, but this is a straw. Yeah, it's the, the best strawberries in Norway are coming from here. And some people even say the best strawberries in the world. Yeah, and the water today is quite intense. Uh, oh, actually, I should say these days, because now more and more well melting water is coming down from snow or from glaciers. It's the number one industry in Alisson. So most likely, if you ate, ever ate salmon, and it, Norwegian salmon, now then there is a really high chance, I would say above 90%, that it went through the port of Alisson before it was exported uh, abroad. Yeah, plants in a doomsday bunker. Yeah, and that island is so far away that if you would swim there, you would definitely die within two minutes or something. <laughs> now, if you take the, an, uh, an airplane, then uh, from Oslo, it is about three hours. And on that island, yeah, there is a, a massive bunker and they, have a, they can store about four and a half million crops, 2.5 billion seeds. Uh, and some journalists branded this place as Noah's Ark of Plant Diversity. It's a very safe place because it's far away from conflict. And some nice sights. Oh, 
So if they remove the, let's say the, the roof tiles and they put grass back instead. Um, another benefit is that it cools down the whole city altogether. So uh, yeah, it's uh, working perfectly. And in the meantime, you are noticing that the landscape is changing, big time. I think at least, no, at least two meters snow next to me. All sizes and shapes. Um, but there's a couple of things we humans agree on: is that trolls are ugly, uh, dumb, uh, and very unfriendly. Yeah, they like to start chaos and uh, avalanches, this type of thing. So, uh, but no worries again, uh, it's daylight, so you won't see them today. And trolls, they are usually, yeah, no, everyone has a different opinion on what they look like. And I just like the picture of the broken snow, I don't know why, but that, uh, because, yeah, it's handwork and you, even though it be uh, so high up in a cold area, you, the body will uh, warm themselves up big time. So, uh, yeah, those people are not freezing, but uh, yeah, there was definitely hard labor and it can be very tricky to orientate. And one example is here on the right side, there's a lake. So you can imagine how dangerous it is if you don't know the area and you're just wandering around in snow. Uh, that's also usually why Norwegians don't really hike in the mountains in the winter or at least when there is a lot of snow uh, of course there is the activities like skiing, snowboarding and uh, cross-country skiing uh, but you know uh, hiking at random uh, through this type of areas it's too dangerous So we arrived in Trollstegen and today we take our time. So we take 30 minutes oh, on the right side some toilets. Uh, it's this temporary toilets because some avalanche uh, destroyed uh, the restaurant with, uh, with the real toilets. They are building things back up. So on the right side it's in the blue building some toilets. in front of the bus to make a photo and 
He got a small heart attack when the bus driver <laughs> let the bus move forward an inch. Uh, sometimes it can be hectic. Uh, now it's still in the beginning of the season, but in some areas, yeah, then it's. Uh, I think at this point, uh, at a daily basis, at least 2,000 vehicles. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, and then, but you have to imagine that, okay, now we're going down in a slope of 10% uh, angle. Um, but we already saw some cyclists, right? Some, yeah. some tiny cars, motorcyclists, and then you can add later people with campers, maybe caravans even, depending on the area. Uh, way more tour buses. Yeah, and then uh, not having the skills to drive in the mountains, and then sometimes it gets a bit Challenging, uh, fun situations, dangerous situations. No big accidents though. But at the right side, the waterfall. I just got a question: If you get uh, can you drink the water from the river without purifying it, it depends on uh, where you do it. So. At the top of the mountain, the water can contain tiny rocks, tiny rubble. Uh, sometimes it's even hard to see it with the, with the eye. Uh, if you drink that, uh, especially a lot, then it, you can imagine it will give some stomach problems. Uh, so sometimes it works like this, then the water first goes to a lake. The risk of tiny rocks, uh, yeah, it's clean. We go down on the road. Uh, yeah, that does a couple of uh, rules, like if you go... Uh, who can go first, you know, and that's sometimes not clear. <laughs> Let's enjoy the super epic waterfall that is around the corner. photograph where you wear today. Uh. That roof thing, it's not only tradition, but it's actually what I explained earlier, the circumstances inside the building are more comfortable. Uh, we, when we arrive, you will also see some trolls. And the reason you see them is that they are fake. These, these are not real trolls. Ah, for the people with kids, there's a, also quite a nice playground. And also a small souvenir shop. So that is 135. 135.
the, the speed, yeah, even nowadays, some routes can take up to four days. He was from Newcastle, Pennsylvania. He was from the USA. Um, yeah, he unfortunately died there. So the founder of base jumping died in a base jumping accident in that place. And it was quite, uh, yeah, he was first doing some Guinness Book of Records type of thing. Uh, I don't know, like pulling out your parachute as late as possible, or I don't know what. The reason, uh, because the, the train track next to me, and that reminds me of uh, Harry Potter. Because uh, Harry Potter was fully recorded in England, except one scene. And that was a train in a, the, a, a train scene, and it was uh, not exactly this location. We won't see it. It was like nearby. Uh, yeah, it's one of the most beautiful train routes in the world. Uh, they cons considered it like that. And that's also the only place in that movie that was uh, recorded outside of England. Base jumper jumped from the yeah, kind of like a stool. I'm sure it did to make that. Someone just pointed out as well that there was a picture in which they put the Eiffel Tower next to the mountain and it was about how much? Uh, four times the Eiffel Tower. Sometimes you lose a bit of perspective of why, how big things can be. But uh, yeah, yeah, huge. And that was the amazing Fears to Trolls excursion we took out of the cruise terminal of Olesen, Norway. It was another hour and a half or so drive back to the port and coming up are some of the sights we saw on the way back. So what do you think of this tour? We thought it was fantastic, and if you've taken it, we'd love to hear what you thought of it as well. Thank you very much, happy travels, happy cruising, and we'll see you soon in another video.